welcome to my channel my name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review the fountain pen I'm going to review today is a surprise gift from my Scottish pen friend Eric Rollo you may remember my review of Eric's Schaefer Tyrannus Ferrari red a couple of months ago Eric bought that pen new received it without touching it sent it off across the ocean to Alberta for me to review brand new in the box now that's amazing and it was a very cool pen which I had tuned for Eric before I sent it back to Bonnie Scotland the whole thing made me suspect that our generous Scottish friend was a wee bit touched in the head but a couple of weeks ago I received an email from Eric saying he was sending me a gift I asked him then if he was daft and he just chuckled and just last week this showed up in the mailbox this is an italics chaplain's tankard fountain pen with a broad cursive nib from mr pen now i can officially say right into the camera at mr rollo you're off your f***ing trolley but you're also very sweet and very generous with this fabulous and unexpected gift thank you now join me and see what the f a chaplain's tankard is right now <laughs> and what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons some measurements and then provide a writing sample after the writing sample please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen and a disclaimer right off the bat here uh, Eric you mad bastard I love this pen if if it was a sharpie crayon I'd love it because it is a gift from a wonderful guy and I love you that being said I'm going to review this pen as I would any other pen from a Visconti to a plastic POS warts and all so please do not take offense at any negatives I might find with this pen I'm just trying to keep my phony baloney job holy underwear we've got to protect our phony baloney job gentlemen we must do something about this immediately 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 <laughs> first a little bit of information about italics I had never heard of the brand italics until Eric told me I simply must have one well he sure made sure of that all right <laughs> the online seller of italics is mr. pen which is mrpen dot co dot uk on your internet dial the italics brand was started by the proprietor of mr. pen Peter Ford the pens are made in Ryslip, a small village about 40 minutes north of London. That's London, England. To quote Peter Ford, quote, We were disturbed by the large makers deserting the italic pen market within the price band of £50 to £75, so we commissioned our own, unquote. The compelling feature of Peter Ford's italic pens are the affordable prices for pens with a huge array of available nib sizes and grinds as we shall see mr. pen currently has 14 models of italics from which to choose this being the chaplain's tankard which is an interesting and amusing name to say the least indeed most of the models names are a fascination in themselves being derived from either church professions like deacon's doodle or seafarers like the Commodore's credential and all of these pens have the largest selection of nibs for models of pens I have ever seen this chaplain's tankard is available with a stunning 19 different nib options they are fine non-italic fine cursive fine italic oblique right foot medium non-italic medium italic medium uh, you can read the list for yourself I'll give you a moment's time this one was identified in the invoice as broad cursive but you'll see it has a slight left oblique angle to it my best research and guessing leads me to believe these nibs are purchased as generic stock nibs from Yovo and custom hand ground by Peter Ford and Associates into 19 varieties but let's get to the pen itself it comes in this simple cardboard box with mr. pen foil stamped on the top inside we have the pen and on the underside of the top we have a note from mr. pen describing how to fill the pen 
and a snail mail contact address in the United Kingdom. From the top we see a soft plastic sticker attached to the top finial with the italics logo. This is an available added option for £1.40 extra. I know Eric added this uh, but it is fairly soft and I can feel the sticky edges of that sticker. Uh, there's just a straight black finial underneath there I'm sure uh, but I'm not sure how they stuck that on there so I'm going to leave it on. So it's a flat top metal finial which tapers up to a very thin gold band uh, which holds the clip and the clip is a very nice teardrop style and it's very springy and very usable. The black enameled metal cap continues to taper up to about here where it is straight and then we have a raised dome gold colored cap band which has italics laser engraved in block letters. The cap then extends for another oh, about three millimeters to a small step down to the black plastic barrel which is straight to about here where it begins to taper down and then there's a seam uh, between the plastic blind cap which unscrews in the barrel and there you see the end of the captured converter so you can turn that to fill your pen in fact that's what the instructions are talking about here when they say to expose the fill button immerse the nib in the ink and turn the fill button anti-clockwise and then slowly clockwise uh, to fill the pen. This is similar to other pens like the captured converter Leonardo Memento Zero which you have an end cap which you open up and you can access the end of the converter. This way you can fill your pen uh, without having to remove the barrel. This can also be a drawback because you never know exactly how much ink you have at any given time. The cap unscrews with one and about a half very sticky turns to reveal a black enameled slightly hourglassed section. Some very broad smooth gold metal cap threads and a number six size two-toned broad cursive steel nib and a black plastic feed. The nib and the feed are friction fit. Let's get a closer look at this nib. You can see the two-tone nib with some standard scroll work and the name italics laser engraved in block letters. There is no size indication on the nib. But let's look at this tip. That is a hand ground and polished broad cursive italic nib. This right here is the whole point of this pen. You can almost discount everything else about this fountain pen because of this tip treatment right here in my mind. This individual hand treatment on this nib is worth the price of admission alone. This pen is priced at £24 uh, which is about $33 US. Where are you going to find a fountain pen with a hand tuned cursive italic nib for under 50 bucks anywhere. How about just a hand tuned cursive italic steel nib alone under $33 US? Of course we'll get into how well this writes in a moment but this is the heart of the italics uh, pens in my mind right here. And let's just note here that this has got a slightly left grind to it as you can see. Let's take a look at the inside of the cap for a moment because I've discovered why the capping and the uncapping of this pen is so wonky and sticky. You can see right here that there is a black plastic cap liner but they've integrated the threads into the cap liner and because this is such a soft almost rubbery plastic it sticks on the broad metal threads of the barrel. Also right here the end of that first thread there it is right there I think you can see it see that three first thread just ends in mid space right there doesn't go completely around 
This makes capping and uncapping wobbly, sticky, and uneven all the time. Another frustration with the cap is that it doesn't post. And it might have to do with that cap sleeve, black plastic cap sleeve in there, not fitting well on the end of that barrel. But it uh, doesn't stay on at all. And if it did post, because that cap is metal, I'm assuming that this cap is brass, um, the barrel is plastic, that this would back weight that pen pretty severely anyway. Now to unscrewing the barrel and the section. In addition to the instructions on the box for how to fill this pen, they should also add a warning not to unscrew the barrel with a converter full of ink. You see the little black extension on the converter knob to extend the converter out the back of the blind cap can catch on the inside of this barrel and screw the piston back down as you unscrew the barrel, which of course would push ink out the nib as you do so. So rule of thumb with this pen is number one, be careful if you're going to do this. If it's full of ink and you want to check on how much ink you have left, take the blind cap off first and then unscrew this very carefully to make sure that that knob does not change. Here you see the included captured converter. This is just a regular standard international converter uh, that fits in the section there and it has an extension knob just stuck on the end of the converter. Now if you were like me and you fill your cartridge converters by filling them with a syringe rather than sucking up ink through the nib. Um, I don't really have a use for that blind cap and I do like to check on my pens to see how much ink is left. So I simply pull this little back knob off of the converter and don't use it. And that way that extension knob does not stick out the back. I don't use the blind cap and I can check on my ink level anytime I want. Problem solved. Until we meet again and the kiss is solved. Kiss is solved, idiot. This will also take standard international cartridges, just like that. And you can put a second one in the barrel and piggyback them. And one of the bonus features is if you take this little cap off, you can use the blind cap to get at your extra cartridge. Or if you didn't bring one, or if you run out of one, you can bring your cartridges in and shove the full one into the body of the pen just like that. In the hand, the pen is very nicely balanced with the metal section and the lighter plastic barrel balancing each other nicely. And it's plenty long enough in my medium sized hand. As I mentioned, this pen retails for 24 pounds, not including shipping. And the choice of any of the 19 different nibs doesn't change the price. You have the option to engrave the pen with or without gold filling in a few different fonts from block to script. And you can add the italics sticker on the finial for additional charges, as I mentioned. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the italics Chaplin's Tankard with a Jinhao Centennial, a Moonman M600S, a Kaigaloo 316, and a Conklin Girograph. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted, thems that will post. I think we can all admit that all five of these pens pay homage to the venerable Parker Duofold. I'll also note that the Conklin Durograph does not have its black uh, Conklin nib on it. It came with two black nibs um, and both were, in the words of Gerard Butler, Joby. Joby means shit. The sweetest name that you could ever have for a shit jobby. It was rank. Cool. This coffee smells like shit. It is shit, Austin. Oh good, then it's not just me. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. <laughs> And 
we're back with the writing portion of the review. This is Claire Fontaine 90 GSM paper, and this is the italics. Chaplin's Tankard. And it is a broad cursive metallic steel nib. And the ink today is J. Urban. Stormy Gray. Let's check the wetness. This is a paintbrush. This is a gusher. Marvelous wet nib. And I did nothing to the nib, of course, because Peter has hand tuned, or Peter and his minions have hand tuned this nib before it went into the box. And it is perfect. And here is the swatch for. J. Urbain Stormy Gray. It's part of the 1670 collection. And I finally found a really nice match between pen and ink uh, for this ink. Um, I put this Stormy Gray, which I love. It's uh, this gray, charcoal gray with this gold fleck in it. Just lovely. It tends to clog up some pens. And also, if you don't have a broad enough nib, uh, that gold fleck is just lost on it. So this pen is very wet and flows very beautifully and I haven't found the nib, I haven't found the feed to uh, clog up on it at all and it just lays down a lot of ink and makes this ink look terrific on the page, especially on something like Clairefontaine. And here it is with uh, Mont Blanc Oyster Gray which looks pale and sickly in comparison and I've used this ink once and not interested anymore and here is some hero black and I also want to mention that this ink is a gift from Janice thank you Janice and as to line variation well this is a cursive italic nib so you're going to get naturally line variation depending on your stroke because the horizontal strokes are thin and the vertical strokes are very thick because it's a cursive italic. So there's no point in pushing it, but it does, if you push it, have a little bit of spring to it, which convinces me that this is a German steel nib, so it's probably a Yovo. I can't confirm that, but it probably is. And it's, m it's much softer than uh, your typical brittle Chinese steel nibs. Comparing this line to my Richard Binder chart, this line here equals 1.3 millimeters, which is a Western double broad. And the horizontal line is 0.5 millimeters, which is a Western fine and a Japanese fine to medium. That's a lot of line variation right there. And this nib is just glassy and smooth and is a gusher. Like I say, it's like a paintbrush. You probably can't even hear that on the page. I can't, I'll shut up. So that nib is just glorious. This is what I meant when I said you can just forget about the pen itself and this nib alone is worth the price of admission. And for our quote today I thought I would use a little bit of Robbie Burns.
and reverse writing well there's no point in doing that at all no reason to even attempt it what are you daft office all right and some quick writing As I said, this is a paintbrush, so very, very wet and flows very, very nicely. In fact, so much ink flows out of this pen that I'll be wanting to check my ink levels quite constantly while writing with this pen. So I'll probably do that uh, piston knob ectomy on it to uh, keep it from gushing any time I take the barrel off. So what do I like and what do I not like? about this fountain pen. The very first thing I absolutely love about this pen is that it was a gift from my friend Eric. I will always cherish this pen as a reminder of a terrific, generous pen lover from Scotland. And if this were not a gift, well, there is one huge like and a number of quibbles. The huge like is this exquisite, broad curse of italic nib. It really is marvelous. But what about the pen itself? Well, the pen does have its issues. The biggest issue for me is sticky wobbly cap threads. I smell really, really bad. Oh dear. <laughs> He's a stinky dinky lucky honky tonky winky wonky. Ah! <laughs> oh, I had to stop looking at his bum. <laughs> it just feels annoying each time you cap and uncap it. It's just a pain. Another thing that is odd about the cap is how heavy it is in comparison to the rest of the pen. The metal cap and section overbalance the relatively light plastic barrel. I wouldn't recommend the little plastic logo sticker on the end of the finial for an extra pound 68. Uh, that's almost three bucks in Canadian money. Uh, either. Uh, just this flat black on top would make the pen look a little bit classier. But overall, this pen is worth the sticker price even if you get it to move the nib into another one of your pens. It is a standard size number six steel nib that I suspect is Yovo, although I said I can't confirm that. I might give it a try in one of my other Duofold clones and see if it works. And there you have it. Thanks again, go out to the mad Scott Eric Rollo for this generous gift. Because what did the crazy Scotsman do if they did that video I improve? <laughs> right! No, I improve! Let's have a look inside this fridge here, mate! There's no I improve for them! How the hell have you not gotten the I improve, lads? Are you crazy? I'm scared! No I improve! That's all of you! I don't know you like! And if you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you for watching. And that's all she wrote. I made this.